With the book of 1 Thessalonians being such a great book for new Christians in the first chapter, we're going to go over some things that every Christian should apply to his life. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing I'd like to point out is don't be a lone ranger. The Apostle Paul had friends in the ministry. Two of his fellow laborers and soldiers were Silvanus and Timotheus. They're the ones who wrote this epistle as Paul spoke the words to them. Paul wasn't a lone ranger by any means and anyone who follows Paul's example shouldn't be either. Silvanus is the Silas of the book of Acts. He is the one who is there singing and praying with Paul in Acts 16.25. Peter even calls him a faithful brother in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 12. Timotheus, as you know, is the Timothy of 1 and 2 Timothy. Paul calls Timothy my own son in the faith in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2. This shows Paul had a hand in leading Timothy to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't feel that you have another Christian to fellowship with, then pray that God would help you lead someone to Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul led Timothy to the Lord, and he became Paul's work fellow, as it calls him in Romans 16.21. So don't become a lone ranger. There are plenty of Christians who think that they are so much more spiritual than others, and they will break fellowship with another and won't fellowship with anyone. And there are Christians who think they have to break fellowship over every little belief that someone disagrees with them on. But 1 Thessalonians 1.1 1, 1 also says, Unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. This brings up something else. Christians shouldn't forget they are in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is in them. Notice the word church in verse 1 isn't referring to a building. It is referring to a group of believers. Every believer is in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and he is in them. The moment you believe on Jesus Christ, he came to live inside of you. All saved people are members of the body of Christ. You can find this in Romans 12, 4 through 5, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. And 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. And this is one of the mysteries in the Bible. Ephesians 5, 32 says, This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Well, there may be many local churches. The church is the body of of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is made up of every born-again believer. Colossians 1.18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Always remember that you are in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is in you. See Colossians 1.27. And that's another mystery. Why would Jesus Christ live inside of our body, which still has a sin nature. That's a mystery. Remembering this fact will help you in your daily walk where you try to please God. So remember the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Read 1 Corinthians 6.19 to see more about that. Wherever you go, you take Jesus Christ with you. 1 Thessalonians 1.1 also says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace in this verse is referring to a daily growth in grace. Daily growth in gr grace comes from reading the Word of God. See Jeremiah 36, 8, 1 Timothy 4, 13, Job 23, 12, Isaiah 34, 16. And it also comes from marking His words. It talks about that in Jeremiah 23, 18. And this daily growth in grace also comes from praying. See 1 Thessalonians 5.17. 
and trying your best in your walk to please God. See 1 Thessalonians 4 1. The peace in this verse, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 1, only comes from knowing you're saved and also living right. That's how you get peace. Know that you're saved and live right. In Revelation 6 4, Jesus Christ opens the second seal, which takes away peace from the earth. He gives peace to those who accept and follow him, but he will take away peace from those who reject him and don't follow him. Also notice in the verse that Paul loves to call him the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't on a first name basis. He hadn't watered him down to just Jesus or JC like Hollywood does. Paul says Jesus is the Lord and not just Jesus is Lord. There is a difference because Satan will confess Jesus Christ is Lord at the great white throne judgment. And you can read about that in Philippians 2.11. But the word the is key. Jesus is the Lord. But verse 2 leads us to our next point. It says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Every Christian should try to make some type of prayer list. In this list, you should have things to give thanks for. As it says in verse 2, Paul was giving thanks for other Christians. Also notice it says, for you all, and not just the ones he liked or the ones who could help him. Also, your prayer list should have things to make supplication for. You should brag to God about God while praying. See how God brags about himself to get an idea in Isaiah 44, 6 through 8. God is the only one with bragging rights. He's the only one we should be bragging about. 1 Thessalonians 1, 2 also says, making mention of you in our prayers. Write down other people's names on a prayer list and mention them in your prayers. Everyone wants a mention. Wouldn't you want others to mention you in their prayers? And moving on to the next point in 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, it says, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Christians should always rem remember to produce fruit. Notice it says, Paul remembered their work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope. A Christian who has his mind on the right things will remember the good things about others instead of just remembering the bad things that they've done. You want to have some good things for other Christians to remember. Notice the verse said, work of faith. You don't work to get saved. You work because you are saved. The works don't get you salvation. You're, you work because you already have salvation. See verses like Romans 4, 5, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and Titus 3, 5 to confirm that. Your good works please God and also earn you rewards in heaven if you do them with the right motive. The ones with the bad motive or the ones done for self will get burned up as it says in 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 15. And this takes place at the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is mentioned in Romans 14.10 and 2 Corinthians 5.10. Your labor of love is done because you love the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 5.17 shows that staying in the Bible and learning doctrine is counted as labor. And that's because much study is a weariness to the flesh. As it says in Ecclesiastes 12.12, 12, A man who studies and rightly divides the word is counted as a workman. As it says in 2 Timothy 2.15, And you might possibly get a crown for being a Bible believer who labors in the word. As it talks about in Job 31.35-36, There are many things you can do that is considered good works. The only ones that are truly good are the ones you do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Next, the verse says the Thessalonians had patience of hope. In our Lord Jesus Christ. So this means Christians should be patiently waiting for the Lord. Most people see waiting as boring. They don't know how to use their time wisely. If you are waiting in a doctor's office. You can pull out the Bible and start reading it. And that passes the time. A top priority should be to redeem the time. Time is precious. 
You should use it for things like reading the Bible. Waiting for the Lord becomes a lot easier if we occupy till He comes, as it talks about in Luke 19, 13. The Lord is coming to get all born-again believers in what many refer to as the rapture. And you can read about that in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And more will be said on this in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. But this time, He comes together, all believers, and they get a glorified body. As it talks about in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 57. This is our hope. The hope has to do with the salvation of our bodies. Romans 8.23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. The hope has nothing to do with making it to heaven. If you're saved, you're spiritually already in heaven right now, as it says in Ephesians 2.6. Sometimes you ask people if they're going to heaven when they die, and they say, I hope so. But once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, His finished work on the cross, and His blood that He shed for you, once you believe on that, you are going to heaven no matter what. The hope isn't like, I hope this or that. The hope is a sure thing. Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, Romans 8.25 says, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. But while we patiently wait for that time, we should be producing fruit and redeeming the time. The last part of 1 Thessalonians 1.3 says, In the sight of God and our Father. This should remind you that everything you do is done in God's sight. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Ever notice how someone may react different when cameras are present? Someone may not steal something off the shelf or they may drive safer with cameras present? Christians should remember that just like they take Jesus Christ everywhere they go because he lives in them, they also do everything in his sight. There is always someone watching. Surveillance systems can lead to crimes being solved even without the actual crime being caught on camera. God sees everything you do and isn't missing bits and pieces of what happens. He's seen it all. Every wicked thing that saved and lost people do is seen by God. Mark 4.22 says, For there was nothing hid which should not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. God sees all the murders, rape, stealing, lying, fraud, abortions, Bible correcting, adultery, and blasphemy. He sees men mock, reject, lie about, and cuss his son. This is why when Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, he comes back with a vengeance, as it talks about in 2 Thessalonians 1.8. But next, a Christian should remember he has been elected. 1 Thessalonians 1.4 says, Knowing brethren, beloved, your election of God, every Christian has been elected to a service. But did you know you can't get elected until you put your hat in the ring? It's like this, God chooses you, and the devil chooses you. So it is a tie until you choose which way you want to go. Many people who are called Calvinists claim that only the elect will be saved. They claim Jesus Christ only died for some, but the rest of the people are damned for eternity. But the election is based on foreknowledge. 1 Peter 1 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. God chose to save everyone and take everyone to heaven who got into the body of Christ. But you aren't chosen until you choose to get in Christ. To say that God only chooses some and then damns the others is against verses like 1 Peter 3 8. God wants all to come to repentance. He isn't going to force you to come, but He definitely isn't going to stop you either. And 2 Peter 3 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There is more than one elect in the Bible. The elect is someone who is chosen to a service. And you can read about this in Isaiah 44, 1. 
And then Isaiah 42 and verse 1 says, Mine elect. And it is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 45, 4 calls Israel the elect. And here in 1 Thessalonians 1, 4, the church is referred to as the elect. You have to rightly divide to figure out who the elect is when it comes up in Scripture. I can't just come to uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, 4 and say the elect is Israel because it calls them elect in Isaiah 45, 4. And just like I can't go to Matthew 24, 31 and say the elect of that verse is the church, just because it calls them elect in 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. You have to rightly divide and figure out which elect the verse is referring to when it comes up in Scripture. Doing this and you won't be led into false doctrine. You won't be saying that the elect in Matthew 24, 31 is the church and that the church is going through the great tribulation. And you won't be saying that the in 1 Thessalonians 1, 4, the elect is Israel or anything else. You have to rightly divide when you approach the scripture. Next, we see a Christian should watch which men they follow. In the time we are living in with Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, it seems many Christians get deceived easily. They will click the follow button on anyone. But it says in 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. See the first part of the verse, it says, our gospel. You want to follow a man that actually preaches the gospel. Many ministries are all about the end times, or the Illuminati, or a bunch of feel-good stuff, but they don't actually give you the gospel. The gospel for today which Paul preached is this, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. When anyone adds to this gospel, they are accursed, according to Galatians 1, 8 and 9. Notice Paul didn't say anything about water baptism, local church membership, giving to the poor, living a good life, living a good life after you're saved, helping old ladies across the street, or any other good thing you might do. The gospel is this, Jesus died, he died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Don't follow someone who adds to this, or follow someone who doesn't proclaim this. Some will get the gospels and the Bible mixed up. This is why you have to rightly divide, as it talks about in 2 Timothy 2.15. The gospel for us today is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, but there is more than one gospel in the Bible. For example, an angel in Revelation 14, 6-7 preaches the everlasting gospel. It's different than the gospel Paul preached, but yet the angel wasn't accursed. That is because the angel will be preaching this gospel when that gospel is re relevant for that time. Notice Paul said the gospel didn't come to them in word only. So he was using the word of God. You should follow someone who uses the words of God and not a satanic counterfeit such as the NIV, NKJV, ASV, RSV, NLT, or any other satanic Bible. Now see how Paul says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. You should follow someone who preaches and teaches the Godhead. See Acts 17, 29, Romans 1, 20, Colossians 2, 9. So far in this chapter, Paul has mentioned God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and now the Holy Ghost. And in 1 John 5, 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. He is one in three, and three in one. He isn't three gods. We aren't polytheists. We believe in one God, but he has manifested himself in three persons you don't want to follow someone who preaches only god the father but not the son you don't want to follow someone who leaves out the holy ghost you don't want to follow the oneness groups who say it is only jesus christ you don't want to follow many charismatic groups who place all the emphasis on the holy ghost more so than they do jesus christ follow someone who teaches the godhead 
as it should be, like Paul does here in this chapter. 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 says, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord. This shows that you should follow those who follow the Lord. It is okay to follow any man as long as he is following the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Something to remember is, everybody follows somebody. A person may criticize another for following a man, just because they aren't following the man they are following. I've heard many teachers who say, don't follow a man, but yet they want you to follow them in their ministry. It just doesn't make any sense. God set it up to have preachers, teachers, and evangelists, as it says in Ephesians 4.11. He wouldn't have done this if he didn't want you to follow men to a certain extent. You can follow a man, but don't let him become your final authority. The final authority is the words of God in the King James Bible. If a person follows the Lord and his words more than the teacher, then that person will be an individual and not just a clone of their teachers. But the next thing we can learn from this chapter is to receive the word no matter what happens. 1 Thessalonians 1, 1.6 says, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. They received the word, even though it brought them affliction. The saying, no pain, no gain is true. The more you suffer for the Lord, the more you earn in eternity. See Romans 8.17. And 2 Timothy 2.12 says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will also, he also will deny us. Most people won't receive the words, even in the comfort of their own home. If they even read it, they will try to change the words to fit their belief. This is because man, because man wants to be his own final authority. Since people don't receive the words, we have tons of false Bibles that are satanic counterfeits of the true words. Next, we see that we should be in samples to other believers. 1 Thessalonians 1, seven says, So that you were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. An ensample is different from an example. A ensample is something you should follow exactly. We should live our life in a way that other believers could follow us exactly. And Paul did this in 2 Thessalonians 3 9. Just like doing sinful things in front of a lost person can lead that person away from Jesus Christ, the same is true for a saved person. You can lead another believer down the wrong path by not being a good in sample in front of them. Next, we see that we should proclaim the words of God. 1 Thessalonians 1.8 says, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Psalms 119.11, you should have the words hid in your heart so that you can quote them in times of trouble. Christians should care more about feeding on the words of God more than their necessary food. As it says in Job 23.12, we shouldn't give in to Satan's temptations because we have a two-edged sword in our hand. Psalms 149.6, the ones who can't sound out the word of the Lord are the ones who never seek out the book of the Lord and read it. As it talks about in Isaiah 34.16, you can't sound out the word of the Lord if it isn't in you. People worry about putting something in them, but it is mostly something bad and not the words of God. They worry about getting pills, alcohol, food, and everything else to help their flesh, but they neglect the words of God. A way to sound out the word of the Lord is to record your voice like I'm doing now. Do your own Bible study and give it out to others. People spend so much time on social media and never quote the words of God on their status. You can sound out the word of the Lord by putting Bible verse magnets and bumper stickers on your vehicle. In Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9, it says, And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. 
1 Thessalonians 1 8 says, But also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad. Their faith was spread abroad without the use of TV or the internet. And we have a big opportunity in the time we are living in. We have the power to reach thousands of people through the internet. But most Christians use it for entertainment and to kill time. I hate the saying kill time. We should be redeeming the time and using that time wisely. People want to use their iPhones for meaningless video game apps and taking selfies. And this is one of the signs of the last days of the church age. 2 Timothy 3.2 talks about people being lovers of their own self. But not only this, after we are saved we should turn from idols. 1 Thessalonians 1 9 says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had into you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. This seems to make a distinction from the church age we are in now and the time of Jacob's trouble, because in that future time they won't be able to turn from every idol. If they take the mark of the beast, the Bible says they are lost. Revelation 14 9 through 10. And they won't be able to turn to God from the idol shepherd. The Antichrist is called the idol shepherd in Zechariah 11.17. I won't say this dogmatically, but it seems to be that way. Once they take the mark of the beast and worship him, they won't be able to turn from that idol. Anything can become an idol. If you are putting anything before God, then that becomes a false idol in your life. Do you find yourself spending more time playing video games watching movies, working out, getting on Facebook and Snapchat, then you find yourself reading your Bible, praying, and doing spiritual things. Those things can become an idol, and Paul said the Thessalonians turned to God from idols. 1 John 5.21 says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. We are living in a time where people know more about people like Tom Brady, LeBron James, or any athlete more than they know about Jesus Christ. They could give James Harden or Russell Westbrook's whole stat sheet, but couldn't name the place where Jesus died for them. The world wants to add Jesus Christ as a theme to their worldly life. The contemporary crowd will add Jesus Christ to worldly music, and it doesn't fit. Adding lyrics about Jesus Christ to a sinful rock beat or rap beat doesn't make the wicked music any less sinful. Sometimes the lost world understands this better than the worldly Christian understands it. But 1 Thessalonians 1.9 says to serve the living and true God. Our God is alive and he is the true God. There are so many false gods throughout history who have died, but our God is alive. And last but definitely not least, we should be waiting for his son from heaven. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Something that might be hard to understand is that God came down in the flesh as Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but he's also God in the flesh. This is another one of those mysteries. In 1 Timothy 3.16 it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, and he is alive, because he rose from the dead the third day. He lived a sinless life for us, was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead for us. He did this so that we could believe on him and what he did. He is coming back again in what many call a rapture, and then coming back at the second coming with all his saints. Read about this in 1 Thessalonians 3.13 and Jude 1.14. The rapture of the church is just the first part of the second coming. As believers, we should be waiting patiently for this to take place. This is why Paul says to wait for his son from heaven in verse 10. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. This is another reason I, I don't believe the church goes through the time of Jacob's trouble, because Jesus Christ delivered us from the wrath to come. And many don't believe the first half of the time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath. But if you notice in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1, the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, is the one who opens the seals. 
Jesus Christ is God and he's the one opening the seals. God's wrath is definitely being poured out even at the beginning of the tribulation. If the church is going through this horrible time, then we are not waiting on his son from heaven. We are really waiting on the Antichrist. People who hold to the mid-trib and post-trib beliefs do not believe Jesus Christ could catch away the body of Christ today at any moment. They believe the Antichrist and all of these other things will happen first. Therefore, they are waiting for these things to happen more than they are waiting for the Son. But our patience of hope, as it talks about in 1 Thessalonians 1.3, is waiting for His Son from heaven.